everybody. Welcome back to Run and Gun. If you're new here, I'm JT. Welcome to the channel. And in this video, we're going to talk all about neon portraits. And I'm going to share with you all of my secrets to how I edit my neon photos. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pick a good photo that I think is a good representation of my work so that we can edit it. Let's see. This is a pretty good one. Here is the before. And here is the after and then the final image is going to look like this. So let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to do first is go to our settings, reset all of our settings. So again, you can see the before image and now we're going to start editing in Lightroom. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to apply a little bit of a crop I always like to start with this first and then I will do minor tweaks as we go. This is just kind of black nothingness on the bottom lost in shadow. So we can crop that just a little bit and you can see that really brings your attention to our subject's face. The next thing I'm gonna do is change our color profile. Working with a portrait, this portrait profile flattens things out just a little bit. We're gonna come back to that at the end of this video, so don't miss out on that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is mess around with my white balance. You can get some really cool colors just playing around with your white balance. So we're gonna tweak this the way we want it to, but just know there's a lot of power with your white balance here. I'm gonna cool down this image quite a bit because these were some very bright red neon light. So I'm going to take this down to about 2000 and take this down quite a bit just to get that warmth in there. And that's looking pretty great. Let's do, I think that looks pretty good. That is a good start again before and after we're just tweaking those hues just a little bit. I think the exposure looks pretty good. My histogram is filled out pretty well up there. Let's take our highlights down just a little bit just to preserve some of this detail in the neon sign. Now, something that I see people do a lot and I do not recommend is turning your highlights all the way down. Your glows from your neon sign, as you can see when I play with this, all that glow information is held in the highlights, so you really don't want to lose that. I only want to turn down my highlights just a touch if I'm losing a little bit of detail. So I'll do the same thing with the shadows. And again, I don't want to crank my shadows and get a noisy flat image. That doesn't make the face of my subject look very flattering. So just a little bit and a little bit goes quite a long ways. So now I'll bring up my whites just a touch. You can see I get a little more of that glow and that pop and that contrast up in my neon signs. And I'm going to turn my black values down just a bit just to get some nice rich shadows. And that's looking pretty good so far. I'm going to turn down my texture just a hint about right there. Just smooth out some of these extra details and things in the face. It's almost like doing some skin retouching. Just make some super smooth skin. That looks pretty good. Clarity I will bump up just a touch just to get some of that detail back in the hood, in the sign, in the hair. That's looking pretty good so far. And then just a little bit of negative dehaze. You can see that adds a little bit of a glow to the neon. Again, I don't want to punch this. That looks really bad. Just a hint. Negative 10 looks good. And then I'll add a little bit of vibrance to this image. Let's see. About 20 looks good. And I think that looks great so far for a basic toning tab. Again, here is the before very harsh highlights and very strong hues on the face that we kind of balanced out in this image with some nice warm orange and some nice cool blues. So that's great. We'll close this basic tab for right now and we will move on to our HSL tab. So if you really want to know more in-depth information about this HSL tab, I already have a video on it. I will link it down in the description and in the top of this video, but let's get into doing some minor tweaks to our hues. So I think this orange looks pretty good. I might warm it up, make it a little bit more red. Go in here, kind of tweak some of these reds and oranges. I'm just kind of doing this by taste. Another one of my favorite tools is this targeted selection tool. I can go in, 
click the targeted selection tool, click and drag up and down on my image to make adjustments to specific hues versus trying to eyeball it. We'll go ahead, we'll undo those, and I'm just gonna do some of these by hand. We'll take our yellows, move them towards the orange a little bit, add some nice hues to those greens, make our blues just a touch more teal, and I think that looks pretty good. Nothing drastic in this tab. Let's go over to our saturation tab, make some minor adjustments. I'll grab this targeted adjustment tool. Maybe we'll pump up some saturation in these yellows a little bit. That looks pretty good. I'm liking that so far. Again, no major adjustments. I don't think there are any purple hues. Yeah, there are a little bit in this image. Make sure our blue isn't too saturated. Yeah, we'll add a touch of saturation to our blues. And then I really like the saturated green. So we'll bump up the greens a little bit. And as you can see, that bumps up the blue, the green, and the yellow because all of those hues are mixed together to make green. And I think that's everything we need to do in the HSL tab. Again, we have our luminance here where I can take certain hues and maybe bring up the luminance of the green. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe bring up the luminance of some of those orange hues, some of the blue just a touch. Maybe I want to bring it down just a touch. Let's actually go and we'll reset that blue. I liked having some of that brightness and the highlights there in the face with the blue. So that's pretty much everything we need to do in Lightroom. I always finish off my images with a little bit of sharpening. So we'll go down to the detail tab. We'll sharpen our image a touch, add a little bit of detail. And I don't think this image was very noisy. I'm not seeing any noise, so I don't think I really need to do any noise reduction. But that looks great so far. Now we can kind of start working on the icing on the cake or the final tweaks we need to do to this image. So I'm going to open up our basic tab and remember that profile that we talked about earlier. Now, this is kind of the icing on the cake to the image before we get into Photoshop. I have some different presets that I've made as profiles that I can apply to this image and kind of see what looks best. Now this is just kind of a final tweak to the color. I can pick one of these profiles that I like. I kind of like this pink and blue one and then I can take that profile and I can change the amount that is applied to the image. And I will have these on my website if you want to try out any of my neon profiles or LUTs. But we can go ahead, we can close this out. I'm going to change this back to portrait and I'll show you how to apply some LUTs to these images in Photoshop. So let's go ahead, we'll apply our glow in Photoshop. I will click edit in Adobe Photoshop and this is going to take us over to Photoshop and open our image in Photoshop so we can apply all of our final tweaks, adjustments, and create our final photo. All right, so we are here in Photoshop and we're gonna add our glow to our image. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hit our channels layer. You see our channels are blue, green, red, RGB, but we're gonna hold Command on our Mac keyboard or control on a PC. We're going to click that RGB layer and we just created a selection around our highlights also known as a luminosity mask. So let's go back to our layers tab. So now that we have our highlights selected we select our bottom layer here and we hit either control or command J on a Mac and what we just did was create a new layer with just our highlights and we're going to use this to create our glow. So what I'm going to do next is select our layer. We're going to call this glow and we'll call this one our base layer. It's always important to name your layers and have good layer organization, especially when you start working with 10 or 15 layers. It'll just save you time. So we'll select our glow layer. We will go to image, apply image and make sure all of your settings match. You should have your source image that we imported from Lightroom. Make sure your layer merged, channel RGB, and important here, blending mode, multiply. So we'll hit OK, and you're going to see that that darkened our highlights a lot. So let's turn on our base layer and see what happened. You can see our highlights got dark. That is OK because we are going to set the blend mode of our glow layer to screen. 
and you can see that added some brightness to our highlights and that is great. It added a little bit of punch and contrast to our image. So let's make our glow layer actually glow. We'll go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. So we have our Gaussian blur settings window up here and this radius is going to be how much glow you apply to your image and this will be different depending on how close you are to your subject and how large your lights are in your scene. So I like to create my first glow usually somewhere between 5 and 10. 7 looks good. We're going to hit OK and then I'm going to turn the opacity down on this layer just a touch to about 50%. Then I'm going to hit Control or Command J again, duplicate that layer. We're going to call this glow number two. And now we have a second glow layer. I'm going to go up to filter, blur, Gaussian blur again. And now I'm going to do somewhere between two and three times my original blur. So let's go Actually, let's go quite a bit larger. Let's go to a radius of almost 50. Let's go with 50, hit OK. So we have our two glow layers now, and this first layer really affects right next to the neon and on top of the neon. And the second glow layer affects a lot more of the rest of the image on the face and things like that. And if it's too much glow on the face, you can always go in and erase some of that but this is looking pretty good so far. I'm going to select both of these layers, put them in a group. Again, it's all about organization. We're gonna call that glow, and we can see the before and the after, and we just really made this image look great, I think. I love that glow. And remember the profiles I just showed you in Lightroom, we can do the same thing in Photoshop with a LUT. So I'm going to click right here, this color lookup adjustment layer that will make a new color adjustment. I want that above my base layer and I want that above my glow as well. Go up, select load 3D LUT. I have all of my neon ports 3D LUTs right here. Let's just click number one. We'll see what that looks. Open it up. That is a pretty cool look and again I can select that color lookup layer and I can change the opacity to how much I want that LUT to affect my image. We'll go through, we'll check out another LUT here. Let's try number five. That looks kind of cool. Check out some of these other ones. So again, this is just kind of the icing on the cake, and I have these LUTs on my website on therunninggun.com if you want to check them out in my shop. I also have a handful of other LUTs you might enjoy. So that is how I edit my neon portraits. Again, just to summarize, I do the core of my editing over here in Lightroom, and I can choose to add a color profile in Lightroom if I want to, or when I'm adding my glow and my luminosity mask in Photoshop, I can add that LUT on top which again is available at therunninggun.com. So that is all for this video. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, please hit that like button and subscribe. Share this video with a friend that might be interested in some photo editing. But that's all for this weekend, and until next time, get out and go shoot.